Hi, my name is Barb Eichinger from Future Plus Systems, and welcome back to our lab. Today we're going to show how the DDR Detective works with LPDDR3. LPDDR3 is a JEDEC memory standard used in mobile and other low-power applications. Let's take a look at how we connect to the target. We have three methods available. The first is a chip interposer. The second, a midbus footprint. And the third is a combination of the two, where the midbus footprint is on the chip interposer. For our investigation today, we'll be using the midbus. Okay, so let's get started. Let's open up the probe manager and select LPDDR3. Let's configure the tool. First, we'll start by running iDetector. iDetector centers the sampling point so that the tool latches the address command and control signals correctly. Once this process is done, we just hit Apply. Now let's configure the probe. First we tell the tool to automatically measure the frequency. Then select the cable type, which can be MIDBUS or BGA. Then set the rank slash width of the memory device, the density, and the temperature you are operating at. The read-write latency will be set automatically. If your target is using ODT, select Edge or Level. Here is where you can control the external trigger. Now that we are configured, let's start using the tool. One great feature is that the tool can automatically capture the mode register settings at boot time and during runtime. These parameters are used to help set the JDEC timing and protocol values that we will use to measure compliance. Let's see if our target has any compliance issues. In the Violation Setup screen, we will enable all tests. This tells the tool to look for all these events simultaneously. That is, on every clock edge, the tool looks for over 400 different cases simultaneously. In the past, you would have had to program a logic analyzer to look for one at a time. The DDR Detective is a real paradigm shift. We can look for all violations to these parameters simultaneously while the target is running any type of software. Here's our scoreboard display. It shows all the events that have been enabled in the setup screen. The yellow indicates a failure and the red designates the failing ranks. So let's drill down and take a closer look at one of these violations. We'll pick number 35. The JEDEC parameter is TCPDED. This check says that after the target does a power down, self refresh, or deep power down, that the memory controller must insert two no ops before any other type of command. Let's set up the trigger to trigger on this violation. Here's the results in our state listing. We can clearly see the violation all the events that led up to it, and all the events that came after. Now let's take a look at the same violation in the waveform. The waveform and state listing operate on the same stored data. The violation is clearly marked for the viewed data, and all the violations in the capture trace are easily identified. The user can jump from one to the other by simply moving the zoom in marker. Our new waveform has some great usability features. Among them, the ability to change the waveform's color scheme and add sticky notes. So when you share the data with your colleagues, you can easily note points of interest. The DTR Detective has a log file. The tool can write out to a file all failures, the date and time of failure, and the per second failure count. This is very useful when running long tests and looking for that needle in a haystack problem. Let's use the DDR detective for general debug. Let's say I'm looking for a write followed by a read. I will use our powerful store qualification on rank 0 to store only reads and writes. Then I will set the trigger to look for a write followed by a read. This way, we can quickly store and trigger only on the events of interest. 
here is the results in the state listing. Note, only reads and writes are shown for rank zero. The green lines on the left indicate that bus traffic has been filtered per the store qualification. Here is the waveform view. The yellow mark indicates the trigger. The green indicates the filtered traffic. The DDR detective also stores and reports the ranks power status. You can see here that the ranks operate independently. The waveform view allows you to quickly see if the expected power management is being adhered to. Let's take a look at our target's performance. We can evaluate how robust the test software is by looking at bus utilization. We can quickly see when the software causes the bus to be busy. We can also evaluate power management by seeing how often CKE is asserted. Lastly, we can see percentage of bus bandwidth that is used to transfer command or overhead information. The DDR detective's performance counters are truly real-time, evaluated on every clock edge, and reported every second. This is in contrast to the traditional approach that only evaluates data stored in a tool's trace buffer, which really only represents a fraction of bus activity. Well, that's it for our quick demo of the DDR Detective for use with LP DDR3. To summarize, this tool provides the following. High fidelity connection to your target. General purpose LP DDR3 debug and validation. Automated LP DDR3 compliance violation detection with the ability to drill down to find root cause. Real time, all the time, performance counters to give you quick insight into your target's performance. For more information on this and other great memory validation products, check out our website at www.futureplus.com. And we'll see you next time in the lab.